Hi, welcome back to the shop. So today I figured I would do some uh, square corners. And there are a lot of videos like this on YouTube, how to make square corners. That one's a real short one. Um, but I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted to show a video that, you know, no one's ever seen before. And I, I, so far I couldn't find a technique like this on YouTube at least. Uh, or on like iForge Iron or whatever. I didn't look that hard. And the second thing is... Uh, I wanted to be able to show how to make corners with this sort of scoop on the inside. So when you make a regular square corner, uh, I don't really have an example around here, but if you make a regular square corner, you know, this is rounded, um, but the corner is usually inward a bit. Um, if you want to make this really fat, you know, beveled kind of look, uh, you have to use a different technique. And, you know, you might be able to see it. That's actually forge welded. And the way to control that inside radius is just how much you upset. So if you want something nice and tight, kind of like that, you actually don't have to upset at all. And in my opinion, this is way faster than the upsetting method at the vise or the anvil. You're not fighting the material bending back and forth. And you know, you can see from this that this isn't totally cleaned up, but this just needs a little bit of treating at the anvil here and here to clean that corner back up and take the bow out of that. And that's ready to go. And and this takes, I don't know, this takes me probably half the time to forge weld it, so it's definitely a big time saver if you're doing a gate or grill or something like that. So I got a couple of pieces of square bar, I'm going to um, scarf them, we'll weld them up, and we'll see how long it takes. Alright, so for, for this corner, um, we're not going to do you know, any radius on the inside, we're going to do as little as possible, so I'm actually not going to upset. So I'm just going to use this edge of the anvil, or you can use an anvil block like that, a uh, you know, relatively sharp edge, not you know, razor sharp and just uh, set it down at 45 degrees, you'll see me come in right here. And I'll do one bar like this, and I'll do another bar from another angle, so you can see. Set it down at 45, I'm lining up the corner of the bar with the corner of the anvil. You see how I kind of close that angle up as I go? It's almost like making a chain weld. Now you might be able to see right there. See how it's a little fat right there? There's a little bit of extra material. So I'm actually just going to set that back because that is hard to bring back into the weld. I want it nice and square across there. And obviously this would go a lot faster if I wasn't talking to myself. Right? And then I'm just going to press down that edge a little bit and I'll show you final product here. <coughs> so that's what we have. See how that goes right to the corner? Come to a sharp edge. Close that angle up. And you see that? See how it's thick right there? So just come in, lightly upset it. There you go. So, you can probably see that. Alright, so we've got two, and they're exactly the same. And this will be backwards if you're a righty. This way, because I'm a lefty. Maybe we can... Yeah, there we go. So, like, like that. See how they kind of nestle together? It's hard to shoot. So, we're going to get them hot, stick them together, and... There's our corner. And you can see we got plenty of material. Or maybe you can't see. You can see we got plenty of material there to weld. So should go well.
There you go. Now, oh boy. Now that would be perfectly suitable for you know any architectural thing or you know like a gate or a grill where no one's going to look too close. You know you can see the seam right on top there, and you can see a little bit of that toe. Oh no, the toe is there, and you can't see this toe much at all. So there you go. Oh yeah. So uh, one more thing. I'm going to do this again. And we're going to use this piece. I have it center punched, so I know which one it was. And it's, uh, call it 5 and 5 eighths right now. So 5 and 5 eighths long. I'm going to put a scarf on this. We're going to see what's going to happen. Line it up. and five eighths so I'm going to measure that outside corner and it's still five and five eighths maybe it grew a sixteenth but that's pretty good in my book so I'll dress this up and I got another one in the fire right now and uh, we'll see what happens when we weld them together So, just gotta find a punch mark. They're not totally blended together, they're just kind of stuck, which is fine. Yep, yeah, okay. So, our number is. That's not the one. Yep. Alright, so there's our punch mark. This must be the one. Yep. Just about five and three quarter. So we're an eighth inch over. And you can see that, you know, we have a fair amount of upsetting back to do right in this area. So that'll come in right to five and five eighths. The point I'm trying to make here is that um, welding square corners, you know, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt because you've got to weld. My point here is that you don't have to do any math. So you can get a square corner just measuring one bar one length, one bar the other length, you weld them together, those two segments are going to be the same lengths after the weld, after this is all dressed up. So there's no math, there's no center line you have to take account of. It's pretty quick if you're good at forge welding. Obviously just today was not my day. So, uh, you know, there's that. But, you know, if you're, if you're good at forge welding and you're competent, this is a good way to make square corners. And I hadn't seen it before on YouTube, so I, I figured I'd share. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll see you next time.